Hey, what's going on, guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to break down the two-game NBA slate on Sunday. It's good to have NBA back. Uh, no games today. Wasn't sure what to do with myself. I'm just watching USFL. Like, I need NBA to be on. So happy we have two games. Uh, should, should be two good series as well. Um, if you guys are a first-time viewer, welcome. I make content for DraftKings, uh, PrizePix, NBA Top Shot. Uh, the sponsor of the video is Prize Picks, which is a player prop site. You can use my code DKDFS for a 100% match up to $100. And premium content I do offer that on Patreon.com um, with the month of May uh, starting here in uh, less than eight hours. Um, be a perfect time to sign up. Again, I, I cover USFL, NBA, and also offer an esports package that includes uh, in the gold package. Um, okay, so let's recap uh, the showdown slate. It finally happened. Finally. And you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Jaron Jackson Jr. in the captain season at 7% ownership. Going for 70 in the captain. You would love to see it. He has caused me so much pain. Now, I need a couple more games for him to repay me. But this is a start. Right? He's on the right path. Um, but no, seriously, right? I knew he would be low owned. Uh, Clark was like 5x the ownership in this tournament. Um, I was willing to go to Jaron Jackson. Now, both actually had a good game, but Jackson slightly outperformed him for his salary. Um, and like I said, someone commented on my YouTube video saying Jaron Jackson doesn't have upside if he stays out of foul trouble. Exhibit A. He went for almost 50 fantasy points. So that is the ceiling with Jaron Jackson Jr., uh, he finally repaid me. I know a lot of you guys uh, were able to cash as well. Uh, taking down, uh, love to see it. Again, Jaron Jackson. Oh, yeah, we're going back to the well. Take down here as well. Jaron Jackson, the captain. Um, that's great. Love to see it. I went to Chalky John Cat. I just ate the chalk there, but I played a pretty contrarian lineup. Now, D'Angelo Russell, he gets benched in a must-win game. Really, really. I mean, it was the right decision. It, it, McLaughlin was playing way better. It, it was correct. D'Lo was playing awful. Uh, but that tilted me. I went one of one of my prize picks plays. Hit the Jaron rebounds easily, but the D'Lo, ugh, ugh, that tilted me. But yeah, I went to a low owned Tyus Jones over Chalk here at Vanderbilt. That one, uh, that worked out in a big way. And low owned McDaniels over Chalk here in Vanderbilt in a huge way, going for 33 fancy points of very low ownership. Okay, one more time, I'll, I'll, I'll continue to bring this up, right? In situations that there's no guarantee of the minutes, I'm always going to go for the lower-owned option, especially on small slates like these playoff slates and the showdown slate, right? So once again, you had the field assuming Jared Vanderbilt was going to play big minutes. We had seen in this series Jared Vanderbilt play under 10 minutes and under 20 minutes a couple times. So there's no guarantee of his minutes. His ownership was inflated. I went to McDaniels at a fractional ownership, paid out in a big way. Now, I mentioned a couple guys that were fringe. Uh, so first of all, a couple things. Nas Reed, how do we not get that info until after lock? Like, he wasn't at the game. So, like, I just don't understand how we don't get that information. That It sucks if you played him. Um, he was questionable. We just, like, didn't know. It was like it was the Judge Judy Jeff. It's like, are we just not going to – we just didn't get the news. Uh, someone did reply, though. He's at the game and, and replied. It's like, oh, I don't see Nas warming up. I didn't see that until after, but shout out to you. Um, hope you enjoyed the game, even though unless you're – you're probably a Minnesota fan, so that uh, probably didn't have a, a great time. But um, that was number one. And then Torian Prince was very chalky and high stakes. Um, and I thought – I was like, there's a chance he doesn't play, right? We had seen a couple games so far this series where Torian Prince got a DNP. He was, like, close to 50% in high stakes, and he got a DNP. So – um, yeah, that is it for the look back, guys. Uh, this was high stakes ownership. Again, Nas Reed was 20%. Well, obviously, he didn't play. Vanderbilt was 60%. Uh, D'Lo was 50%. Cat and, and, and uh, Jow are both massive chalk. Um, again, Torian Prince, 40% owned. Didn't play. This is the winning lineup. Uh, Ja, Edwards, Bain, Triple J, Jones, and McLaughlin. Okay, so let's talk about this two-game slate. We'll start off with Milwaukee. And Giannis had to come by 11K. Um, I think it makes for a great spend up. This is going to be a competitive game playing on the road against Boston. There's no Middleton. He's out for basically, I think, the entire series. Um, so I know Boston's been solid defensively, but um, I'm not scared to go to Giannis. He's going to play about 40 minutes. No Middleton. He's going to have to do more offensively. I think he makes for a great play. I also think Drew Holiday makes for a great play at 8.2. 
Um, minutes should, should be, you know, close to 40. These are going to be the two that are going to have to really leave this offense. So both are, are, in my opinion, pretty good options. Bobby Portis at 6'4", continues to start, continues to play over 30 minutes. I think he's a pretty safe option in the mid-range. Good rebounder. He's gone for double-digit rebounds now the last three games. He's a decent scorer. He can knock down some threes. I think he's a fine option. Now, Lopez, more of a contrarian play for me at 5'3". Minutes, I expect around close to 30. Um, not as good a point per minute guy as Bobby Portis. And they're relatively similar price points. So, you know, straight up, I'm going to prefer Portis. But that's not saying Lopez can't outperform uh, Portis point per dollar. So if you wanted to go for the more contrarian option, you can go to Lopez. But I think Portis looks a little bit better uh, straight up. Grayson Allen. Uh, finally, the Grayson Allen people got uh, punished last game for paying over 5K for Allen uh, while we went to uh, Connaughton for much cheaper who outperformed him. So that was uh, that finally uh, worked out. But with Grayson Allen, he's going to play 25 to 30 minutes. He's been shooting the ball very well. Like 8 of 12, 10 of 12, and 5 of 12, and five of 10. The only downside is he's pretty score independent, right? So if he if he struggles with the shot like he does in game two or game one here, he can really hurt you. And he's at a price point where like there's more risk. So obviously the ceiling is still there for Allen. Um, he's going to have open shots. just a matter of can he knock down the shots. I think the safer play for the salary is Connaughton, who probably plays 25 or so minutes. Um, you know, he's a, a little bit better of a rebounder. Um, he can all obviously knock down some threes as well. So, uh, these secondary options are both in play. I still think Connaughton's a little bit safer, uh, than Allen, uh, for the discount. And then this tilts me last game. Cause you had one Javon, chalk Javante Green went for seven steals in the game. There was just like 50 steals in that, in that, uh, game five, you had Wes Matthews go for four steals and Javon Carter go for five steals. So, the answer is no, I'm not chasing either of those. They'll probably both, well, Wes Matthews will for sure be in the rotation. He's going to start. I would rather go to Connaughton. I'm not chasing I'm not chasing either Matthews or Connaughton. They're not going to get five steals again. Um, they're both low usage guys. I want none of them. All right, on the Boston side. So Jalen Brown, this is something to keep an eye on because it's a hamstring. And we know hamstring injuries are not fun. So he's dealing with a hamstring strain or tightness. Uh, but he's going to try to play through it. So that does worry me a little bit. However, I think that will keep his ownership in check on a small slate. So the ceiling is very clearly still there for Brown. He's going to play around 40 minutes. I will say this much safer play is Tatum. Not dealing with an injury. He probably plays over 40 minutes in this game. He fouled out. That's why he only played 36 minutes last game. I expect on average low 40s, like 40 to 42 minutes from Tatum. So I think he makes for a very safe play at the top. Mid-range option, mid options, I think Smart's your safest bet. He's going to play 36 to 38 minutes as long as there's no foul trouble. He's their best defender on the team or one of their best defenders. Um, and he's a guy that will do a lot of the ball handling. So uh, I think he's a pretty safe play. Uh, he's shown a ceiling. He had a ceiling game last game. The bigs is where it gets tricky. We want to keep an eye on the Robert Williams news, right? Because they've been kind of keeping his minutes intact. He only put 16 to 14 minutes. Was in foul trouble last game. Um so this is, if if he's still limited to 25 minutes, it really, like, affects everyone. Because then Horford probably only plays 25 to 30 minutes. He'd be okay. Tice would lose minutes. So, like, if Robert Williams is, is still going to be limited, it kind of takes the bigs out of play. Um, if Robert Williams is going to start and no longer be in a limit, then I think he's my favorite of these uh, Boston Celtic bigs. And then value options, there's a couple guys I think are intriguing here. So Derek White's minutes have been all over the place. I think he's in play for tournaments, though. Right, so looking at the minutes in the series, 28, then 13, then 14, then 27. So I think if he plays well, they can extend him. Um, if he struggles, uh, he'll probably be on the bench to close the game. So with White, I think he's more of a boomer bust play just from the minutes we saw in, um, in round one. Where Grant Williams, I actually think is a pretty safe value play. Um, I would assume he's going to try to defend, like they're going to try to throw him on Giannis a lot. He's played 30 plus minutes now the last three games. So I don't know if we continue to get 30 plus minutes from Grant Williams, but if we get, you know, 25 ish, I think at 3.8 K that's fine. You know, he's not a super, he's not a great point per minute guy, but he's cheap. And I expect him to be a pretty decent part of this rotation. You might see a little bit of Peyton Pritchard playing the backup point, but don't think it's enough for me to consider him unless you get Marcus Mark foul trouble. All right, Golden State and Memphis. So on the Golden State side, I think Steph Curry looks too cheap at 8.9. Played 38 minutes. There's clearly no cap now in his minutes. I would assume we get similar run to last game. Um, and Memphis is not great defensively. So I think Steph makes for one of the better spend-ups on the slate. In the mid-range, we have Thompson, we have Poole, both in play. Uh, Thompson should play pretty big minutes. Played 40 minutes last game. 
Um, the only downside, you know, last game was a little bit of an outlier. He went for four steals, a block, and nine rebounds. Normally, Clay's a little bit more score independent, so he still has a floor. Poole was in massive foul trouble, and also Gary Payton played very well off the bench. They closed with him, but I would assume you get, on average, you know, low to mid-30s minutes and Poole. So, Thompson, Poole, both fine options. Curry's the guy I feel the best about. I do like Draymond Green as well, a guy that will probably start the five. I expect him to play mid-30s minutes, and he can contribute in a lot of different ways. So, I think Draymond makes her a very safe play. I'm kind of indifferent on Wiggins. You know, I finally bought into him. He plays 24 minutes. But previous games, 29, 31, 29, and 37. I finally play with a chance to win big money, 24 minutes. So I think on average, you get around 30 minutes from Wiggins, which just makes him fine. Uh, there's a couple of Valley plays I think are intriguing here. Porter and Peyton. So Porter, no Iguodala. Expect him to play around 20 minutes. Not a bad point per minute guy. Uh, I think he's viable. And then I think Peyton's viable. Now, I don't think we get 26 minutes again from him. He did play very well off the bench. But he's, like, not a bad fantasy point per minute guy. Good defender. He can get those blocks and steals. You know, he's not a terrible shooter. So both Peyton and, um, and Porter, I think, are viable options. I don't think I can get to Looney. Um, I know he played 22 minutes last game. That was against Denver. This is against Memphis. Is more of a small ball team. I wouldn't even be shocked if he gets a DNP. So I don't think I get to Looney. Kaminga may or may not be in the rotation. If you want to take a shot in him in large field tournaments, you can because he's actually productive when he's on the court. But I don't really have confidence with either either of those two. It's 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 a uh, Porter. And it is Gary Payton, the two guys I think you could look to for value. And finally, Memphis. Ja at the top. Again, he's going to play around 40 minutes. Um, he's a guy that can stuff the stat sheet. He's gone for a close to triple-double now in like all the playoff games. So no issue paying this price point at all for Ja. I think he's you know right up there with Giannis and Tatum as you know, two very safe spend-ups uh, or safe spend-ups on the slate. Desmond Bain at 6'9". I think he's – I'm just more indifferent about it. He's going to play big, big minutes. He is relatively score independent, so he can hurt you, but he has played extremely well so far in the playoffs. So no issue if you want to go there in the mid-range. The two bigs, you know what I'm going to, you know what I'm going to say. So they have shown they can both get you there. We saw it last game. Clark and Jaron Jackson both had big games. But I think Clark is the much safer play. He'll get more ownership. He should play over 30 minutes. He's been phenomenal for Memphis. Phenomenal. It's crazy that this guy has been playing limited minutes off the bench all year. Brandon Clark has looked amazing. So I think he makes for a great option in the mid-range. If you want to go for more of the boomer bust play, it's Jaron Jackson Jr., right? Now, Clark obviously has a ceiling, but I think the ceiling's a little bit higher on Triple J. We saw it last game. Uh, the issue is a majority of the time is going to be in foul trouble. So it depends on whether or not you want to take that risk uh, with, with the bigs. Now, could you play them both? I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities. They both get you if Jaron ja get you there if Jaron Jackson Jr. stays in foul trouble. But Clark, the much, much safer play. Jaron Jackson, the more boomer bust play. Do I want to continue to ride Jaron Jackson? I'm not sure. He got me there last game. Maybe I'll just have to end the, the Jaron Jackson Jr. headache. We'll see what I end up doing tomorrow. Dylan Brooks, 5'8". I think it's a good tournament play. He fouled out in 32 minutes. He's going to play on average mid-30s minutes. Um, he's going to shoot the ball a good amount when he's out there. 20, 18, and 19 shot attempts. Um, so if he, if he has a decent shooting game, he does have a ceiling. I think he's a solid tournament play that probably will be low-owned. Kyle Anderson at 4-1. I think we get, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 minutes for him. More of a secondary value there. I don't mind Tyus Jones, who's been, you know, closing uh, a lot of these games. You know, sure, he closed last game because of Brooks foul trouble. He closed these two because of Jaron Jackson foul trouble. So I think on average, you get, you know, high teens, like maybe 17 to 20 minutes for Tyus. But if, if one of those foul-prone guys like a Jaron or Brooks, uh, you know, fouls out or gets in foul trouble you'll see Tyus Jones is the guy that benefits. And he's a not a bad point per minute guy. So I think he's a good GPP value play, that being Tyus Jones. Don't know if I get to anyone else here. Tillman, we'll see if he continues to start, but his minutes have been pretty low and he's been struggling out there. Melton's been out of the rotation. Um, you saw a couple minutes for Conchar last game, but um, it's not enough for me to go to him at the flat min price. So that'll wrap it up for the video, guys. Um, really appreciate you guys checking out as always, just make sure to like subscribe and hit the notification bell if you do enjoy, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.